Hey Eddie, it's Ken and Jeannie here from OK Portugal and welcome to your very own private virtual video tour. Now if our OK Portugal viewers are watching this video right now on YouTube, it means that Eddie has very kindly allowed us to share this video publicly, so please do thank him in the comments below. We're on our way to look at an off-grid quinta set on approximately two hectares of sweet chestnut woodland in Fundau, central Portugal, with an asking price of 99,000 euros. According to the property listing on Pier Portugal, the main building features a kitchen, a living space and a mezzanine bedroom. The property has two wells and two springs and a solar system. The listing also mentions that this property is very private but within walking distance to the local village. It's only 15 minutes away from the city of Fundau, 30 minutes from the city of Covilha, where you'll find a whole assortment of shops, cafes, bars, restaurants, supermarkets and a host of other services. You can get to the very top of the Cerro de Estrela Mountains in one hour by car where there's an amazing nature park to enjoy in the summer months and a ski resort to visit in the winter. This property is around three hours drive from Porto Airport, two and a half hours from Lisbon Airport and four and a half hours from Faro Airport down south in the Algarve. So now that we've seen what this property has to offer on paper, let's go and have a walk around in person to see it in more detail. So we're nearly at the property. Um, I've had to get out the car because uh, unfortunately our car was a little bit too low to get down this road. So from the tarmac road there's a couple of hundred meters of this which is not in bad condition. Uh, but to get down to the property, uh, you've got to go down here. And there's quite a few lumps and bumps. And we actually just smacked the sump of our car on this. So um, Gina's had to turn around. She's going she's gonna to head into the local village and chill at a restaurant. But yeah, you can see you're going to hit stuff with this. Now I'm going to be meeting the owner. And the owner said that um, they've got like a Ford Fiesta or something. And that it came down here totally fine. Bear in mind that our VW Golf is a, it's a Golf GT. So it's a little bit lower than regular. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not great on these dirt roads. And over here you can see the road starts to get quite interesting. Um, there's a bit of a slope on it. And obviously there's a lot of rocks and things. Ideally you would want a four-wheel drive vehicle. Something, you know, not because of the actual four-wheel drive of part of it, but just so that it's, you know, got nice clearance and is high off the ground. And potentially in the winter time this track could get quite slippery. So, uh, yeah, it's worth pointing out. But from here I can see what they mean when they say that it seems very private. Um, you're only an eight-minute walk away from the local village. Um, and I feel like I'm in the middle of like a forest here. It's beautiful. So we've arrived by the house and uh, I just wanted to show you the driveway area and how that works. The house is just in the background and the road that we were walking up was in this direction and then it goes around and all the way up here. So you can kind of go around in a circle. So if people do come and drive here, they don't have to reverse out. So that's pretty useful. Now let's start with the house. The owner has taken me for a, a walk around and uh, it's actually taken one and a half hours just to walk around because there's so much to see. Now they've got some kind of sheep fencing here. It looks a bit higher than normal. It's about five foot high and they've got quite a pretty little garden with lots of flowers and things. Uh, cute little gate, little gravel, gravel sections. And then this takes us to the house. Um, now they've used um, chestnut poles and uh, that's what he's built this little sort of veranda bit out of and it's got um, the sandwich a sandwich roof so it's basically like a, a metal roof corrugated with a uh, foam that's sandwiched in between another piece of metal and that acts as like an insulator and uh, from the front here we can start to see the main bit of the house so over here we can see some of the like the main rocks that actually build out the house those aren't granite rocks and they're not schist. They're another type of stone. They're almost like a sandstone. Uh, and then we have a nice tall balcony um, or patio area. Some seating and this takes us out of the sun. And you can sit over here and you can basically look out over the little garden. And now you can look out over the forest. Now today is really hot. It's about 30 degrees. It's boiling out there and in the shade over here it's really nice and comfortable and it's really pretty with all the flowers. So this patio is 6.409 meters wide by 2.666 meters uh, in depth and uh, the actual roof section of this patio is 2.563 meters high on this the lowest bit and 3.118 meters high at the back end here so it's a very high patio and it feels really nice and airy and and light underneath here, um, but obviously shaded. And now we go up uh, 
two little concrete stairs and we go through some fly netting and then we go into the little house so it's very cute we have a mezzanine area up on the top here and uh, we've got this sort of lounge living room space here where uh, let me just stand in this corner of the room here we've got like a nice sofa you can start to see some of the renderings of the wall um, some little shelves and some key furniture um, and then when we stand on the other side we can see the door it's a it's a beautiful sort of uh, stable door split in two uh, we've got a wood burning stove with an exposed pipe so it's going to give maximum heat out into the room and uh, then we have two rather big windows which have got double glazing nice little sofa area we've got space for a fridge freezer and uh, a nice sort of cooking eating surface and lots of storage space and at the moment they're using a, a gas cooker and oven and then they have a sink so they have a sink uh, the sink does not have hot water they do have a hot water system but it's not connected to the sink uh, at the moment they boil hot water on the stove um, and again we can see all these beautiful exposed exposed rocks and as you can see, it's almost a type of sandstone. It's not a granite, it's not a schist, um, but it's a type of stone that's um, local to this area. And then if we look across to this way, we've got a whole bunch more shelving. We've got some pretty tiling, some more Portuguese tiles here. They're very cute. And then we have a staircase that leads up into the mezzanine area. So I just want to just talk about the double glazing quickly. We've got some nice thick double glazing on these windows here. Um, this door over here does not have double glazing. So um, this is the only part that isn't insulated. The rest of the house is fairly well insulated. You know, the whole roof is this five centimeter thick sandwich foam, sandwich between two bits of metal. So that gives you some fairly good insulation. Um, these, these poles here are sweet chestnut and all of these bits here are sweet chestnut. And one of the nice things about this property is it has its own sweet chestnut coppice. So he's actually built most of this house out of that, apart from these two very large poles. Uh, he did say that he bought those separately. Um, but the rest of the sweet chestnut was all from his own coppice. And now we can take you upstairs. Uh, it's a really nicely made staircase. And let me just turn the camera around so you can see so I'm five foot nine, and as I go up, I'm having no problems hitting into the stairs here. So this little window here gives some good light into the bedroom. Um, and as we look here, we're in the eaves. So in the eaves, they've got some clothes storage, and then they have a double bed. And as I go up, um, there's a nice raised section here. I'll turn the camera around again. And you can see that I, at five foot nine, have got full head height here. Um, but obviously, as we go towards this side, then you are going to have to sort of duck down a little bit. But it's not too much of a problem. So here we can see the double bed. There's even space to put two little side tables. Uh, there's space to hang up clothing and little shelving units. We've got some little lamps next to the beds. And as we look out in this direction, we look over the sweet chestnut railing. And this takes us to the living room downstairs where you can see the sofas and you can see the chimney pipe. Now they were saying that in winter all the hot air comes up here so it actually can get quite warm upstairs in the winter time because as you can imagine all of the hot air comes up here. Um, but now you've got um, you know you've got insulation here and you've got this insulated roof so in the summer this should hopefully stay a lot cooler. And uh, yeah very, very nice wooden floors going up here. Um, like everything's in fairly good condition it's very cute and cottagey and I really like it. So we're going to go back down the stairs and I'm going to show you, well let me first stand at this end and give you a view so you can just get an idea of what this is like. So from the staircase, looking out across the lounge and turning around and seeing the kitchen. So the dimensions of the downstairs area are 3.713 meters across by 6.866 um, in depth. And uh, the height of the roof is 4.253 meters. Now that height is measured um, to the highest point just before we get to the mezzanine area. 
and obviously it steps down here to about three point something meters which we measured outside on the patio area and the bedroom is 3.727 meters by 3.716 meters uh, with a the tallest part of the roof being 2.068 meters so we're going to walk out and uh, now the one thing i wanted to mention is though they've got fly netting here and we have this on our farm i'm hardly seeing any flies which is amazing because on our farm at the moment We've got tons of flies, but we have uh, a lot of sheep farming going on locally and obviously around here there's absolutely none of the sort. So I think you're going to be relatively fly free here. Um, okay, so on this patio there's another entrance here and this takes you to another part of the building. He's done some lime and he's put some wood inside the lime and bottles. It's quite cute. He said originally what he was going to do was he was going to put some glass or something in here to make this into like another, almost like a separate area. And so that on the other side of this wall, you could have some kind of a covered storage to like store all of your stuff. So let's stand back so you can see this a little bit better. We've got two more steps going up again. And uh, you can see a lot of this exposed uh, brickwork now. This is beautiful. And yeah, it's almost like a granite. It's like a soft sort of sandstone. Very, very thick hearth. And uh, so this room hasn't actually been done properly yet. I'm going to, oh, actually the camera's picking it up quite nicely, but I'm going to put on a torch just in case, just to give a little bit of extra light. So this part of the building hasn't been um, renovated properly. We've got tiling that's only done sort of halfway. Uh, the, like the majority of it is all storage. And you can see in the back here, it's got a lot of shelving and basically just storing a whole bunch of stuff in here. It's almost like a replica of the house on the other side. You could totally put like another mezzanine or something in here and develop this one a bit further. In fact, this room over here, this is the toilet bathroom. And up here you've already got like a roof, so perhaps you could build some railings and have this as a mezzanine or carry on going across. It's a nice usable space. Um, the only problem here is um, I'm standing on a nice flat floor and then it goes into this bedrock here and that kind of raises up probably about 30, 40 centimeters towards the back. So. Um, I guess that's why this part hasn't been built out yet. But you might be able to build some kind of a step and then bring it back. Now on this side, we have the solar system. It's got some really good parts on it. Um, this is a Victron Energy Multi Plus. So it's basically a, um, an inverter and it's also a charger. So this will take a 24 volt current and it'll invert it um, to 220 volts so you can run your appliances and stuff but it's also a charger so you can also charge batteries and things off it and this one over here this is an outback um, solar charger so this is taking power from three 225 watt solar panels on the roof and it's dumping the power into these batteries now he did have four originally but he recently didn't top up the water in two of these and unfortunately they got destroyed um, but these two are totally fine and off this he's managing to run a freezer, a fridge and all of the lights and everything. So it's a nice little system and uh, obviously they've been here for a while and it's been all working. Uh, he did say that in um, in the height of winter sometimes you you know if you get like a whole week of no sun uh, they have a generator which is uh, outside and I'll show you that in a moment. Sometimes they have to run that for a bit just to supplement and top up the batteries and then you're like good to go again. You know, but obviously you could add more batteries, you could get better batteries, you could get like lithium battery packs. And uh, you know, with a system like this, you could keep the house going for as long as you need. So just behind us here is the bathroom. Uh, obviously we have electricity, so we can actually turn on lights and things like that. Um, all of the lights here are all LED. It's actually giving a really nice sort of daylight color in here. It's not one of those blue bulbs. Um, so to start with, we have a dry composting glue. Now it's basically a bucket underneath there and uh, the bucket's got compost inside and uh, you obviously do what you need to do and then you take a scoop of sawdust um, you're going to have plenty of sawdust because you've got a whole forest in the back there put saw sawdust on top and you know what you don't have any smell i'm sitting in here and there's absolutely no smell whatsoever that i can detect um, oh, and then when that is full then you take that and you walk down they have an outdoor composting glue and then you throw it down the long drop into one of these uh, composting buckets and then they make human manure out of it, which is basically something that you can use for, you know, composting and stuff. On this side, we have something called the Baylorina. I think that's how you pronounce it. So you basically put, he said you put about three or four logs inside and you can basically heat water up in about 45 minutes. He said it takes 50 liters 
and you get the water up to about 60 degrees in about 45 minutes. It's got a little chimney going up through here and through the roof and then you've got your hot water going on the one side and I'm guessing cold water going out the other side. Um, and then this is all fed to here, to the sink. It's a nice cute little sink, I like the red tiles. It's all very clean and tidy and neat. It's actually a nice little bathroom. And then on this side we have the shower cubicle. So, um, yeah. He said you can have about 10 to 15 minutes of hot water from the 50 litres. So you can have a decent shower out of that. Um, and now obviously all of the wastewater from this sink, from the kitchen sink, um, from this basin over here, all of this um, gets sort of ejected and exited out and down just past this terrace over here. So I just want to talk about something that I didn't see in the listing before and that is um, that this fence row over here, this is the border of the property and so it goes out to this pole over here and then it juts out in that direction and then it cuts down again. So this piece of land that we're looking at here and this section of the building belongs to a neighbour. Um, but he says he hasn't seen the neighbours for about three years or two and a half, three years because of the pandemic and they only recently came back about three weeks ago and they cut down all of the overgrown trees and everything. And he says it's actually really nice because now in the background here you can actually see you can see the city of Fundau down there. Um, you, you're going to get amazing sunsets down there. This is west in that direction. Um, so the front of this house is pointing to the south. So that's north. And directly in the other direction is south. So a south facing house. So the sun's going to come up on this side. Go across the sky and set in that direction. And, uh, and that's why it's so important that you have this lovely little balcony out the front here so that you can protect the front of the house, the south facing side from all of the heat and you've got somewhere nice to sit, somewhere cool in the shade. Uh, oh yes and then there's one other thing I wanted to show you down here and that is where the water goes. So this um, grey pipe over here is a water pipe but it's not connected to anything. Just over there is the water pipe so that's the waste water pipe or the, or the grey water pipe and uh, basically the grey water just goes out here. He said that what they're doing inside the house at the moment is um, they use a bucket underneath the sink for the kitchen um, just to trap any food particles and things like that. And when that's finished, they take it down and they tip it out where the chickens are and the chickens can pick through it. Now I'm going to show you that section there with the chickens later, um, but I'll just show you the back of the chicken house is along here and they had plans to extend it around so that the chickens can come right up to the waste pipe and then you don't have to do that thing with the food bucket, you know. You could actually just have that waste coming straight out there and the chickens will eat it and you won't have a problem with flies or anything like that. Right, so I'm going to follow a similar tour to what um, the owner showed me. So let's go through this gate over here. So we have some sort of makeshift little steps going down here. Uh, it's a little bit on the steep side, so if you do have mobility problems, it's maybe not the best. But I have no problems going up or down that. So just in case you have any issues with that. Uh, on this side over here we have a water tank. And this water tank is basically fed from the gutters up on the roof of the house. And uh, so the water fills up this tank, goes down through this black pipe, and down to where the vegetable gardens are just down here. And I'll show you that in a moment. There's a couple of taps and things like that. Uh, on the left over here we have the generator and that's underneath some uh, plastic sheeting and uh, yeah he just basically fires that up only if he needs to use things that use excessive wattage like um, toasters you know anything that has a massive current draw um, then he says that he'll fire that up just for a few moments if he wants to use a toaster or something like that but of course you could get a bigger more higher powered um, inverter that can handle loads like that if you wanted to not have to use a generator we've got some lovely fig trees here and today's hot, it's like 30 degrees, but there's plenty of shade. I mean, as you look around here, look, it's just, there's open sections and then lots of shade. So this building over here is, um, it's basically like a storage building. They've got a wood store just on the outside. And um, it's just a very basic building made out of like Tijolo bricks. And if you look inside, he's just using it as like a storage space. Just like extra storage, really. It's got like a fiber cement roof 
it's not completely sealed to the elements but you know it'll keep things dry and so they don't get damp and then we have a chicken house so the chicken actual house section um, is let me just get down here is over here um, so there's a little space for the chickens to go and stay in at night time you obviously have to shut them in at night time or they're going to get eaten by predators um, but during the daytime they'll be fine because we've got some chicken fencing along here and we have all the little cute chickens and what do they have here it looks like they've got three no they've got four hens and one cockerel and they look quite happy quite big chickens so this is um the space i was saying that if they extended it round to the back section over there um you know that their chickens could actually pick through all of the food particles and stuff coming out of the gray water pipe it's very nice okay so this um it's kind of sloped we've come from up here it does this and then it slopes down again so the land is you know it's gently sloped it's not really ideal for doing things like vegetable gardens or anything but you can have a nice mode area here you could probably use this as like a little sunning area or something like that um, if you go down in this direction you can see they've got like a little flat section here with like a washing line and uh, they've got a little gate over here and then this steps down to another terrace that takes you across to where the caravan is and the vegetable gardens down here there's a little pool um, but i'm going to follow the route that the owner showed me um, so that we can do a tour that makes sense okay so if we go i believe it was up through here and past the generator And yeah, it was, it was through here. There's a little gate. And this takes you onto another little track. Now this little track takes you down into your land. So just to orientate ourselves, when we first started, we were up here next to this four by four houses in this direction. And there's this little oval track section here, or turning around space. And uh, yeah, so now we're gonna walk down this track. We're surrounded by oak trees. Got lovely ferns, beautiful lavenders. I mean, looking around us here, we're not overlooked by anyone. We're in this beautiful valley, and uh, yeah, it's really stunning, especially on a day like this. So, as we go down in this direction, we get a really nice big oak tree here, lots of shade. And we got the doggies. Hello, doggy. Hello. All right, so I just wanted to um, to chill the dogs out, so now we can talk. Um, okay, so this terrace over here um, goes to where that washing line was. We've got a whole bunch of very mature looking olive trees. Uh, I believe there are 38 olive trees on the property, so you're going to get quite a lot of olive oil. Um, and they're actually in very good condition. If I look at them, they've been, they've, they've been pruned regularly, they're in a good shape. Um, you can see that they've removed most of the plant matter from the inside of most of the branches. So they've been looked after really well and um, this all extends all the way out to where that washing line is in fact let's just go there now and then you can see exactly what i'm talking about here's the washing line and here is the gate like we were at earlier and the generator and the house is up here and as you walk all the way to the end here we're going to reach the boundary of the property. Now, I don't have an exact map of the boundaries of the property. He said it's somewhere between 2 and 2.5 uh, hectares. He's not sure exactly, but they're doing... When you sell a property in Portugal, you have to get this ordinance map done. So he's in the process of doing that, and he said he should have it in about a week or so. Um, but he's shown me very roughly where the borders are. So from here we can see the house and we can also see this um, this brown, sort of reddish brown area is the neighbouring house that's attached. And we can see this wall over here, that's all part of the property. And then it comes out to where this area is, this stone, and then it comes down. So this belongs to you up to there and then back up to this house. So you've got all this green section here. And then it comes up to these trees and it runs all the way down, almost straight 
down in that direction and this drops off into another terrace and another section and then goes back up into forest and everything and there's a whole bunch of forest back there sweet chestnut forest that belongs to the property and down here it's just lovely look at all these mimosas and the sunlight just filtering through very beautiful okay so now we're going to go back to where we came from so i can show you the rest of the tour okay so now we're going to go back to where we came from when the dogs first started barking and uh and then i'll take you down onto the next section which has got a nice sort of poly tunnel for growing stuff and uh, a caravan for guests or spare accommodation all right so we're back underneath the shade of the oak tree and now we're going down onto this next terrace and before we get there i just wanted to point out a couple more of these olive trees and the fact that the land extends all the way down in this direction goes back up here to where the road was from where we were walking earlier and then in this direction it stretches across here down past this terrace the next terrace and up into this forest over here where we've got sweet chestnut and a variety of other trees and ferns and things like that so as we walk down onto this terrace um, and it's got this lovely little greenhouse. Do you, do you mind if I have a look inside? Cool. She's, she's got a lovely little greenhouse where she's growing a whole bunch of stuff. Very, very nice. And uh, yeah, a perfect, nice flat area where you can do all of that. Now I believe this over here, this tap, is supplied by one of these big IBC tanks up there, the one that we saw originally that comes from the water from the roof of the house. So you can use that here to irrigate all of the plants and things like that. And as we walk in this direction, they've got a caravan and they've built a shade over it, which is really important because, as you can imagine in Portugal, if the sun just breaks down in the caravan, it's going to be boiling in there. So this is all built out of sweet chestnut. I mean, all of the structure. There's a little shade outside, some seating area. And uh, yeah, it's a basic old caravan. Um, but it could be used for a variety of purposes. So I'll just give you a little look inside. Uh, there's a little kitchenette, um, a little roof hatch, an oven and a cooker, which I believe is working. And on this side over here, there's two sofas that can flatten out into a bed. And uh, this over here is an electrical plug that comes from the house, from the solar system in the house. Um, but I've heard that the caravan also has its own inverter system and a solar panel. So. Um, it's got a 100 watt solar panel, so you can run basic lights and fans and things like that in here. So that's pretty cool. And uh, from up here we have a lovely little view. So if you were sat up here, we've got this other little patio. And this looks into the forest and down onto where she grows all the vegetables and things like that. Which is very, very pretty. Okay, so if we carry on walking in this direction, and this terrace also just extends to the end there, similar to the one with the washing lines up here. And uh, now, this is where the owner took me down earlier. Um, there's like a bit of a steep path to get down here. So bear with me. Um, there's obviously another way that you can do this, but I'm trying to walk around the outskirts of the property. So it goes underneath here, underneath these low quad trees. And uh, just on the end there is the limits of the property. Um, so it kind of extends out to there and then it goes back in and around. But what I wanted to show you here was this pool. So there's all of this water coming out here. These are coming from springs. And then there's this lovely pool area. Let's go down there. So we're at the very limit of the property on the side here. And uh, in front of me over there is the pool. And uh, as you can see across here, this this hedgerow and going back up here. This goes all the way back up to where the house is. On the other side of this hedgerow is a neighboring plot. plot. Um, and over here are the views of Fundo. Um, so you've got this really nice flat section over here. It's partially shaded by the forest on the side here. And yeah, a really nice section. Now what he's done is he's taken two big concrete rings and they used a digger, a really big digger to bring it across here put them on top of each other on a concrete plinth and then he's built some brick stairs and this over here is basically like a little swimming pool it's actually just like a water container for you know for legal purposes this is just like a, a water container it doesn't have a filter or anything like that but it's essentially a swimming pool and you've got some little seats um, so at the moment 
um, the idea was that this pipe over here that fills it basically comes from here, from the top pipe. And the idea was behind here is almost like he's dammed up a section of the spring. And the idea was that the water was going to reach a certain height so that it would start to come through this pipe and go into here. And then it would go through the second pipe and overflow back into the little stream over here. And that was the idea. But the system is going to need a bit of work because uh, basically this is the area that he wanted to dam up. And uh, as you can see, it's all coming through the bottom pipe at the moment. But when you turn off the bottom pipe or you block up the bottom pipe, it fills up this area, but it starts to overflow, he said, around the sides. And uh, so it kind of needs a bit more work. And then you can dam up this section so it's almost a little pond. And the overflow will go straight into the pool over there. So you can have fresh water circulating around in the pool the whole year round. So you don't have to have like filtration and put chemicals and stuff like that. And then just behind it over here is another big flat terrace. So it's very, it's varied land, you know, you've got flat sections, you've got mountainous sections. You've got different terraces, you have sloped and angled land, but it's good to see that you have these flat sections because now it means that you can grow things like vegetables and you know, you, like you can cultivate things. You could grow vines, start to make wine, stuff like that. In fact, that's one of the things I haven't seen on this farm is any, any vines. Um, so there's a whole bunch of loquats, figs. Um, I mean, there's a whole variety of different trees here. And over here in the veggie garden, it looks like a lot of the stuff, like a lot of the cabbages have gone to flower. Um, but they were saying that one of the most successful things that they've grown down here are raspberries and that apparently they love it down here. So these are all raspberries here and they just apparently get tons of them. And it's a very nice, healthy looking veggie plot. And over here, I'm seeing some black irrigation piping. I'm seeing a lot of that. And I'm guessing you've also got the spring. So the spring's running all the way down and along here. And apparently this runs all year round. So there's always a little bit of water coming through the spring. And if we follow this up, this is now gonna take us to where the water is here. So we've got a little outlet over here and that's coming from this, which is the first spring. And did you see that little froggy jumping in? So, Basically, there's a little spring that comes out of the rock here, fills up this little pond, and there's more springs underneath the ground. And as you can see, it's constantly overflowing. And that's coming through here and just trickling out. We're about a month away from summer, so, you know, there's a good flow still. And then there's an even bigger flow coming out of this one. And this over here is what they call a chaka. So they basically, there's a spring and what they do is they just dig into the spring and it all just fills up with water. And they also have another bigger spring on the back. And then that's just gonna constantly overflow through your land and give you ways of irrigating areas so you can irrigate all your crops out of it and you can fill up the swimming pool down there. Uh, obviously this is all lower than like the main house. So up here we've got the greenhouse and we've got the house up there. And uh, I'll explain a little bit later how they get water up to the main house. So, so far, so good. I'm actually really enjoying walking around this farm. It's a very pretty piece of land. The owners have lived here for nine years. And you can see that they put a lot of love and care into this place. Now, there's another little interesting spot here, which I want to show you. Um, the local area here doesn't have any granite. And there's something here that looks like a millstone or a granite millstone. So check this out. This is a big slab of granite over here. And over here is definitely a millstone what I would think is a millstone. It's even got the hole in the center. And then we've got this spring or river or water running past. He said in winter, there's quite a, quite, quite a lot of water coming through here. And you can see that there's water all year round because it's got this plant here. This tubular green plant grows where there's permanently water. So there's more, I mean, there's tons of water on this land. And in Portugal, that is super important. All right, so now we have a little forest track and this is going to take us up to the next terrace. And now we can start to see some of the forest up here. Now the forest is like on a slope and we'll get there in a moment. All right, so on this piece, they've got like a little outdoor kitchen. And they say that in the summertime, they set this up 
so that they can have like little parties down here and make food for people. Um, it's got a little gas cooker and cutlery and plates and storage. At the moment, everything is packed away for sort of winter. And uh, as you can imagine, this will be quite a cool area to entertain people. You've got like a little patio outside. You can have some music down here. You can have some candles and some little solar lights, make food and look out over this beautiful scenery over here. And you've got this lovely flat section where you can, well, you can do whatever you want with over here. A couple more of the olive trees. Um, all of this fenced off section over here used to be the old chicken house. So that old building over there made out of tijolo bricks used to be the old chicken house. But they don't use it for the chickens anymore. And when we go in this direction, this is where their original composting loo was. So um, these, these barrels over here, they've got human waste inside. So the human waste is mixed up with compost and uh, wood shavings. It sits in there. And I'm not too sure, I think it takes like one or two years. I'm not sure exactly, don't quote me on that. And then you can start to use it, it's safe for vegetable gardens and things. So they'll put one of those barrels at the bottom here. And at the top, let me get there. At the top, you have a loo and you sit in the loo and it's basically like a long drop, but it goes into the barrel. And then these barrels get sealed and they get put somewhere where they get turned into compost. So this is just like an outdoor composting loo, basically. And it's very basic, but does the job. So the waste from your bathroom in the main house, which is up there, the bucket, you'll, you'll bring it down here and you'll chuck it down into this thing. It'll go into one of these barrels and it'll compost. Or alternatively, you can have one of these barrels up by the house and just tip the bucket into that. And after about one or two years, you could, you're gonna get compost. So we've got another terrace up here. Look at all these olive trees and they are huge, really, really big. So let's go down here quickly because on this terrace, we've got the well or the main well on this side. This feels like a really big bit of land for, you know, he said he doesn't know if it's two hectares or 2.5, but it feels enormous because it's got so many different levels and so many different layers and so much varied terrain. Um, and uh, so walking around it is like, you know, you feel like you're exploring. There's nowhere that it's overlooked. There's no neighbors looking over you. It's very private. All you can hear are crickets and birds. It's beautiful. Okay, so we've reached the end here. This over here is the boundary, the limit, and it runs up into the forest. It runs back in that direction, all the way up to the start of the dirt road. And over here, we've got a water pump and that runs off petrol. The pipe goes into this well. And as you can see right now, the well is only about a meter from ground level. Uh, we're, we're just about to hit summer. I mean, apparently this is six meters deep. The owner said the lowest he ever saw it go was about one meter from the bottom, but you can pump that all out and it'll refill itself back up again. So he's never run out of water. Obviously this is not drinking water. Uh, at the top there's algae and there's all sorts of stuff going on, but the pump is at the very bottom and it's got a, a filter on the end. So you're not getting any of the algae and any of the, you know, any of the crap going into the house. But this goes through this pipe from this uh, electric pump, sorry, um, petrol pump, all the way up the hill to where the road is. And then there's a big IBC tank, a thousand liters. Um, they pump it up there. Apparently this pump can do it in about four minutes, he said. And that gives you about two to three days of water for the house in the summertime when you're watering plants and things like that. And much longer in the winter when you aren't doing those types of things. And here's the IBC tank. Um, here's the black pipe that goes all the way down the hill to the well, pumps it into here. And from here it gravity feeds all the way back down the road here to where the house is. So it's got a nice little um, water system going. Um, you know, obviously it's not drinking water, but like what we do on our farm is um, we take a water tank to um, the village and we fill it up uh, with like the fountain water, the fresh spring water from the village. That's what we use for our drinking water. And then for, you know, washing up and for um, showering and bathing and washing clothing and stuff, we use our well water. Uh, obviously, if you cover that well, it's going to, um, you know, stop things like insects and algae and stuff from growing and the water's gonna be a lot cleaner and clearer. This is really pretty. So he's made these little steps going up here and it goes into the forest. And probably from the right-hand side of the steps, I don't know exactly, but you'll be able to see when they get the exact footprint of the, you know, the exact map done. But it's from the right of the steps. That's all 
um, belongs to the neighbor and going down in that direction all the way across belongs to this property and as we look back in this direction this is where we came from the well is sort of behind these brambles over there and then the property goes all the way back up the hill on the other side up to the road which then runs down to the house somewhere there and we've got like the little plunge pool and vegetable patch down there somewhere really pretty up here and so much cooler i'm not feeling the 30 degrees anymore so this is quite steep we've got um, little makeshift stairs but they're very cute and they're very functional and uh, let's just go up to the top here quickly looks like it's got quite a lot of water and stuff down here like there's moss there's lots of ferns it's very pretty and all of this over here is sweet chestnut so it's a sweet chestnut coppice he's gotten rid of all the eucalyptus all of the pine and he's basically letting all of the sweet chestnut grow so that He's got a nice little area that he can actually coppice and he can get amazing wood for building things. And there's also some oaks up here as well that, that I've noticed. So a lovely open section over here. Um, where we've come from, from the, this track, there's kind of a border going up here. Um, it's, I'm unsure to where exactly it is, but I'll take you up to the top section and then we can look down. Obviously once he gets the actual map done, um, like the actual proper map done then you're going to be able to see exactly where all the borders and boundaries are but I'm sure this gives you a really good idea of just how beautiful it is up here uh, bear in mind that we're walking uphill now so there's quite a slope going back down and down there so it's going to be very difficult for you to use this for any kind of building stuff maybe you could put like a yurt up here on little poles or something I'm not sure but uh, you know, it is quite a trek to get up here, and uh, it is on quite a slope. But very, very pretty. I mean, look at all these amazing ferns and things. I'm not sure if these ferns are going to stay for the summer. I think once the summer heat starts, those might die back. It might look very different up here in the summer. And then come winter, it's going to look amazing up here again. All right, so I've walked up to roughly the top part of the forest over here. And uh, let me show you what that looks like. Very similar to where we were earlier. Lots of beautiful ferns. A couple of cork oaks like this big one over here. Now we're starting to see some pine trees um, and then we go back into the sweet chestnuts. Got some nice big ones and what's beautiful about the sweet chestnuts is they have very long poles and so they're perfect for making things like tent poles or teepee poles or perfect for fence posts. Um, so they're a really good resource. Here you can see on this one just how straight they are. Amazing. So I can't walk the entire forest area because obviously there's no sort of tracks going through the whole thing. Um, but there's a lot of forested area. Um, hopefully, you know, if you're interested in buying this, this property, in about a week's time he's going to have the exact sort of map of exactly what land belongs to him and what belongs to any neighbours. Um, but in terms of neighbours and things like that, there is one neighbour that's in this direction, so just to my left. Um, this is the path that we came up. The house is down there and the property extends this way. So there is, um, apparently there's a person that owns a strip of land down here next to the house. Um, but it really is just a strip of land in a valley. So there's nothing that you can really do with it. Apparently all it has is a well. So it's doubtful that they'll be able to do anything else with it, like build a house or anything like that. And then further on from that, there's another property. Um, but you can't even see them from here. So what are my thoughts on the place? Um, well, the land is bigger. It feels bigger than I expected. I didn't expect it to feel this size. Um, you know, it's, it's got a really cute little house. It's like a cute cottage. Um, there's expansion possibility there, but you know, I mean, it's got, it's got everything that you need really, if you want to live a much more sort of simple and sustainable life. Uh, all of the basics are here already so that you can comfortably live here. Um, you know, there's lots of different terraces. There's a lot going on. So you are going to be busy, you know, strimming grass and looking after things, um, but it's going to give you the opportunity of raising animals, growing your own crops and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's a really beautiful bit of land. I think it's really pretty. And uh, you know, all I would say on top of that is just do your homework before um, you buy any property in Portugal. Obviously get a lawyer to have a look through the paperwork and make sure that everything's legal and legit. And uh, you know, from what I can see, everything looks amazing. The owners have been here for nine years. You can tell that they've put a lot of work and a lot of effort into this place. And uh, it's a really beautiful property. I obviously see a lot of these. I see we do at least two of these property videos a week. and. Um, yeah, this is definitely one of the better ones. I really think it's an amazing place. So 
Eddie, thank you so much for commissioning us to make this video for you. Uh, it's been a beautiful day. It's been wonderful to have a look around here. I really hope that I've managed to show you everything um, that this property has to offer and that it's answered a bunch of questions that you may have had about this place. Thank you so much for watching and uh, all the best. Good luck with your um, decision making and your property search. One last thing I thought I'd mention is while I was flying the drone, I was getting attacked by bees. I've never had that happen before. You can see there's bee stings all over the drone. I actually had to fly the drone around to try and get rid of the swarm before I landed it. So I wasn't going to bring a whole swarm to me. Pretty crazy. And there is one last thing that I forgot to talk about, and that was uh, internet access. So um, they use uh, Nosh, which is like a, a mobile provider. I use Mio, and on Mio and Nosh, you can get 4G internet access here. Uh, I'm getting one bar of internet access. I think they're getting better on Nosh. They're able to watch Netflix and stuff like that. Uh, but apparently if you use Vodafone, they've got the best reception in the area. So you can be off-grid, but you can still have all of your creature comforts, Netflix, YouTube, so you can watch OK Portugal. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, anyway, that's me signing off for real now. Thanks for watching. Ciao.